Well, this is Dr. Stan here at Radio Liberty, coming to you from the hills overlooking beautiful and picturesque Monterey Bay and, and bringing you the news behind the news, the story behind the story, hoping to convince you that reality is usually scoffed at, that illusion is usually king. But in the battle for the survival of Christian civilization, it's going to be reality and not illusion or delusion that will determine what the future will bring. And <clears throat> this evening I've asked Dr. David Kennedy to be with us. Dr. Kennedy is a retired dentist who's written and lectured and traveled and spoken extensively about the danger of water fluoridation. And of course he's been ridiculed for that. On the uh, Sydney recently, Harvard University recently published a paper pointing out the dangers of of water fluoridation. So without further ado, David Kennedy, you pick up the story and tell us what's really going on, what's new as far as the, this massive program to poison the people of America. I should point out that most, is it true that most countries in Europe will not allow water fluoridation or do they have fluoridation over there? Oh, only Southern Ireland. Only yeah. Southern Ireland. They hate, <laughs> they, they, they hate the Irish. You pick up the story, David. Well, you know, the, Dr. Stan, thank you for having me on, uh, first off. And and yes, there's gobs of data showing that uh, that fluoride, like lead and mercury and a number of other things, damage the brains of the children. And so uh, the co-author in the article you were talking about, Choi et al., uh, was talking about chemical brain drain. Is that if you want your country to survive in the 21st century and lead the world as we have in the last two and a half centuries, then you cannot damage the brains of the, the population, especially the children, and that's what we're doing. We're doing it with food additives, we're doing it with mercury fillings, and we're doing it by putting chemicals in the water that are demonstrably harmful to the brains of the children. And is this actually what the gentleman who oh, from Harvard actually said in this article? It's actually a lady, but yes, that uh, she, she basically took a bunch of studies, uh, 30 Seven, I think she started with, and then all the ones that were kind of weak and not well controlled, she eliminated those and ended up with like about 25. And then she can, showed that, you know, the, and she took the best of the information that we have, and the, that's how science is, and showed that there was a, a, a very regular incremental de decrease in IQ with increasing levels of exposure to fluoride. A, a decreased level of IQ with exposure to fluoride, and why are we hearing about this? Well, the it, it, the, the people that are promoting fluoride in our water supply absolutely, utterly refuse to address any of the science involved. You know, fluoride is a very poisonous substance. Uh, if you don't believe me, open up a Webster's Dictionary. It says a, a, a powerful protoplasmic poison, and you know, we're protoplasm, so it says it's a powerful pro poison for humans, and that, that it, it's no different than all the rest of the things that we've discovered in the, in the, the last century, you know, that lead was damaging the children, and, and, and mercury was damaging the children, and, and pesticides were damaging the children, but you know, industry and people that have the stuff to get rid of, or who profit from making the stuff, uh, immediately start cranking out all these phony baloney studies. You say, oh, that's not, it's no different than cigarettes or, you know, the, oh, oh, smoking can be harmful to you. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, we've got this study that was done by uh, R.J. Reynolds that says it's not. So it goes on and on and on. Is if they say, we say, but there's no question if you give a rat one part per million fluoride, it has damage to its brain. Well, let me just point out, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to verify this, if you have a computer, go up on Google and just write in, Harvard study shows that certainly fluoride damages the brain of children. Now, we'll actually get you the exact, the, the exact title and the author here as we go into this, but you, 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 fortunately, if you have the access to the internet, oh, I found the article today, simply Harvard study shows damage to the brain, and, and of course, it's much more prevalent against the black, and it's just and the tragedy is it leads to, to social responsibility, which is why almost 40% of all the people in pr federal prison today are black uh, because, of course, the, of the effects of the, of the fluoride on their minds. David, you're right, pardon me, David, you're right ahead. Yeah, the, you know, Dr. Sam, I don't, I don't know why it has to take so long for 
very well done peer-reviewed scientific information to move into the common knowledge of our our country is that whenever something bad is found out about something that's common such as lead in gasoline or or mercury in fillings or you know fluoride in water that that they crank out the public relations m- machine that say oh those are or you're bad scientists, or those are foolish people that think conspiracy is happening. No. If you damage a rat with one part per million, you're damaging children with one part per million. I'm sorry. That's how that works. And actually, a rat takes about 20 parts per million because the same amount of damage. But, you know, why are we arguing about this? Because in our society, is it people that have a vested interest in the status quo, um, use denial and uh, obfuscation and <clears throat> phony baloney studies and their money to stir the pot and make the public confused. And thank you for trying to straighten them out as a as a physician and as a dentist. The, the science is clear. Is that there is no issue. There are no there are no questions. Put the stuff in the water and you damage whoever drinks that water. And that people go, oh, I'll drink bottled water. Well, it's in the bottled water. You know, it's in the beer. You can't get it out. It's a very, very small poisonous molecule that when you put it in the water, it goes right through your reverse osmosis. It comes right through the, the, the charcoal filters. It is a terribly noxious substance, and you can't get rid of it. What are you going to do with your shower? You know, you can't, you can't put a whole house filter. I've tried. I've, I've got... You know, thousands of dollars invested in a system that completely fails after about 15,000 gallons. Well, you know, 15,000 gallons in an average house will go through that in three months. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We'll be back in just a moment. And I guess, of course, is uh, the name uh, David Kennedy, Dr. David Kennedy, who's pointing out that there's this recent study uh, out of Harvard that's uh, basically a cumulative analysis of some 25 studies, and they all come to pretty much the same conclusion, that fluoride damages the brain. Certainly, if you take a rat and you give it a suddenly of uh, of fluoride, sodium fluoride in minuscule amounts, it'll damage the brain in rats, it'll damage the brains of children. I said there are all sorts of studies where they compare children uh, who actually uh, suddenly uh, drink fluoridated water and don't, and the IQ is much lower when they drink the fluoridated water. David, you go right ahead with your story. Yeah, well, uh, the, the uh, Choi study was actually a, kind of a pivotal, pivotal point in the, uh, in the argument, if you will. There really is no argument, but, you know, that it goes on and on. Um, that they basically took a whole bunch of studies, and I'm going to get you the number in, uh, uh, before the program's over, and, and they analyzed them, and they, and they basically showed that if there's an exposure to fluoride in the drinking water, especially in, uh, you know, malnourished children, that there is a, a measurable decrease in the intelligence of that child. Well, there's a lot of other things going on. It's not just about their, whether or not they have trouble in school. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of other problems, you know, the joints and the, 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 um, uh, the thyroid, the, you know, the obesity problem you hear everybody talking about. Well, you know, it, it has to do with the fact that we're basically swallowing a milligram. And, they, oh, the dentist likes to say, oh, that's just a little tiny bit. No, a milligram is a whole lot. And that, uh, you know, they say, oh, it's a little tiny bit, but it's not. It's a whole lot. And so when you take into your body a milligram of a poison, then it basically damages your body for a milligram's worth. You know, if you had took two, it would be. So what if you happen to be a, a baby? You take into your body um, a liter of water every day in the form of formula. If you're a bottle-fed baby, you're, ta- you're drinking your weight in water every three to four days. Well, you figure that out. What if you were a, 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 a big guy like me? I weigh 100 kilograms. And so if I were to drink 100 kilograms of water every three to four days, look at the dose. And that's what they absolutely, utterly refuse to do, is they will not consider the, the exposure, total exposure, from water for an infant. And then there's the other aspect, total exposure from 
all sources. And so you've got your friendly dentist putting mercury fillings, uh, not mercury fillings in, but plastic fillings in that leak, leak fluoride. That, 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 that you've got your school nurse painting the children with 25 to 50,000 parts per million fluoride sealants that, that basically leak or, or varnish that leaks fluoride into that child's saliva and goes right down the throat and into the system and into the brain. So, uh, you know, you've got the school rinse program where you've got the, the school nurse or the teacher dispensing a deadly poison in a little capsule or a little little jar there. You're supposed to swish it around and spit it out, and they wonder why the kids can't learn to read and write. I mean, I, I went to a one-room schoolhouse. There was no child in that schoolhouse that could not read and write, and I know because at every day you had to stand up and you had to read a passage of, you know, see Gene run, see, see Dick run, you know, yada, yada, yada. And so we could all learn to read and write, but we were on well water. We didn't have silico fluoride added to our water supply. And that's and that's the other half of the story. It's not fluoride. It's silico fluoride that's added to 91% of the water supplies in the United States. 91%. And, and that the others have sodium silico fluoride, which is, uh, uh, you know, you can make it from silico fluoride, and they do it to make a dry feed as opposed to a wet feed. But I'm getting technical here. The, the, the issue is there's no moral reason why any government on this planet should be dosing the citizens of the country with a chemical that's known to harm people. And that you can have all the dentists in the world claiming, oh, it's safe and effective and blah, 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 but ask them for the data. And I think the, the scientific studies are there. And fortunately, if we have the Internet, you can go up on the Internet, and you'll find conflicting approaches, but I said that you'll find a great deal of information to verify exactly what Dr. David Kennedy is saying. And I can tell you that I've been to the scientific literature on this subject, and basically there's no question at all. We're poisoning our children and destroying their minds and your grandchildren. And if you're not going to look into this, then, of course, if when the complications come up down the road, why, of course, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Our telephone number is one eight 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 two four liberty one triple eight two four liberty or 464-8295. Give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Go right ahead, David. Yeah, well, the Troy identified 27 studies. Out of, out of more than 35 that were eligible and that they were ones that had controlled for other things that are known to harm brain, children's brains, you know, like the arsenic and lead and, you know, and, uh, and you know, what, what's interesting is even even the, the uh, educational level of the parents and that uh, they, uh, if, if, the, if the parents uh, are, don't take care of the children and, and pay attention to them and, and help them raise, uh, you know, their their educational standards and yeah there is a there's a harm there and so they they identified all those things as best they could and th these are chinese studies why because in the united states we don't care we we ignore all this data we we have huge computers and gobs of data and that you, you call up your your state and ask them where, where's their fluoride in the water supply and they'll say we don't know you can you can call up the the Department of Endemic Disease Control in China, and they can tell you every well in every community. And people have individual wells, so they got the level of fluoride measured at the person's house. And so the, why don't we care? It's because it would be harmful to the industries that are polluting our country with fluoride, and that there are industries that leak fluoride and that they are, you know, places like uh, uh, cracking columns for uh, gasoline, uh, cement factories, uh, brick factories, uh, kilns that fire blazes and, and uh, uh, materials like that. Welders often end up fluoride poisoned because of the flux. That uh, fluoride is a very useful element. It is a powerful substance that you can use in pharmaceuticals. Uh, the the post office workers that were uh, the, they feared were exposed to anthrax. We're given uh, an antibiotic. It's a fluoroquinone. Whenever you hear fluoro, like a fluoroquinone, uh, Cipro, that they had taken it for over a month. If you read the uh, package insert, it says take it for more, no more than one week or consult your physician. So they prescribed it for three or four months, and these people became crippled. Why? Because there's a huge dose of fluoride with pharmaceuticals.
pharmaceuticals. Uh, uh, almost all of your psychoactive pharmaceuticals contain large amounts of fluoride. If you go to a hospital, you're going to get a general anesthetic. Uh, the, the halothane, fluorothane, those all contain fluoride. There are even uh, examples of children that had um, some horrible birth defect at birth, and then they had a general anesthetic so they could correct the, the cardiovascular problem or whatever it was, and that they ended up with dental fluorosis as they uh, matured into a, a young adult because of the fluoride coming out of their bones. So the, the, there's no question that there's a huge amount of fluoride in our society. The, the issue is, and, and I'm not saying they shouldn't have saved the child's life. I'm saying that there's no reason for tankers and, and ships to come from Mexico, China, Japan, Florida, Belgium, all over the world bringing this horrible substance to put in our water supply. That's the problem. Not the fact that we're exposed to fluoride from a lot of other different sources. The problem is we've got a government program to help industry dispose of their excess fluoride. And that's the problem. It's because they're not going to say, oh, well, we're sorry, we were wrong, and we're going to quit doing this. No, they've got a job. They're going to go ahead and earn their salary and their nice retirement pay and all that to continue to do the job that you're paying them to do. Uh, but I think the important thing is, David, that basically if you work for the government and you know what you're doing, you don't dare speak out. I know I've talked to Betty Martini, as he's been... Oh, I'm, I'm, that's on aspartame, but I, I've talked to other people who certainly uh, who have been working with this fluoride issue, and basically, I mean, uh, the government employees are afraid to tell. They know that the fluoride is poisoning, but if they actually come forward and, and reveal this, they can lose their job and their pension and come under tremendous pressure. Is that true? But many, many already have, and uh, you know, but they sleep better at night. Is it courage is a rare commodity? It is. What made this country strong in the first place is what's lacking today, is that courage comes from the heart. It comes from within. And it says, I'm doing right because I believe in my country. I believe in doing right. And that if you don't have courage, if you have a, a, a spaghetti heart that you know, quivers and shakes when somebody says, oh, I'm going to report you, then you go ahead and destroy the country that has made you the person you are today, and that's what's happening. Is the public health department? Uh, I, I was at a meeting. I, I, I went across the United States to talk to the hygienist, uh, the dental hygienist of Maine, and at the, at the annual meeting there in, in Augusta, Maine, um, one of the uh, the ladies putting the meeting on, she asked uh, just a rhetorical question: How many people in this room uh, have work or have worked for the United States Public Health Service? Twenty five percent of the ladies in that room. And there were only two men, but you know, 25 percent of them had, had work or do work for the, Un the United States Public Health Service, and that means that, that the, the government, the federal government, and the state government own the dental profession. That's what the problem is. And basically, of course, they control the, the dental schools. The average dentist doesn't really understand. Do you think there is any growing awareness on the part of our dentists of the danger? I know certainly some of them are backing away from mercury and fillings, but what about the danger of, of water fluoridation? Do you think any of the dentists are really understanding what's going on? Are we having impact in the dental profession? We are, but we aren't. Is it courage is, is, is the thing lacking? Is, is the dentist are so afraid? that the dental society will accuse them of being less than perfect or something like that. So they won't step up and tell what they really think. Hold that tone. Our telephone number is one 24 liberty one 24 liberty Give us a call if you have a question or comment. This is important. Well, this is Dr. Stan. I guess is uh, Dr. David Kennedy, who we always enjoy having on. Well, what happened when you were back there in Maine talking to the dental hygienists? Did they understand what they were doing? Did they understand they were poisoning their patients? Well, they did by the time I was done. I, you know, the, it, it, when you talk to a large group of people, you don't want to immediately hit them in the face and say, by the way, you're poisoning your patient. So I started off with the, the, the story about how bacteria uh, cause tooth decay and gum disease. And that you know, hygiene is is, is, the, is the goddess of health. You know, she's she's the the lady that basically has saved more lives than all the doctors and surgeons on the planet because cleanliness is 
what has reduced the enormous amount of in, infection and so forth that was in our society 100, 150 years ago. And so I talked about hygiene, and I talked about preventive dentistry and uh, how we can make people healthy. And after I got through explaining that, showing the microscopic picture of health versus disease and how they can use that in their own practices and so forth, then I went to talk about how you can kill that bug and that you know, immediately they would reach for their favorite substance, fluoride, and that will actually kill the patient. So you don't want to kill the patient. You want to kill the germs. And, and so you, and I explained how to do that. And by the time I got done, the, there were a lot of people that had changed their opinion. Whether or not, but remember, a hygienist is, is like a, a nurse. They're under the thumb of, of God. And so, you know, the, the doctor God is going to tell them, oh, you can't do it that way. And so, you know, it, it, the person that wasn't in the room is the person that really needs to get the education. And, and that, the problem is, is I, I've talked to, to kids that just graduated from dental school. They don't know anything. They don't. Is it, they've got an ADA certified accredited education, and, I'm, and, and they don't have the, the first clue that mercury's coming off fillings, fluoride's a poison, um, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, what are we doing? We're, we're cranking out a bunch of molar mechanics, people that know how to fix teeth, kind of more or less if you want to have your teeth ground on, but they don't know how to stop the disease, and they don't know how to prevent it. And so... Uh, I'm sorry, you know, we've still got 1950 dentistry being taught in our supposed higher education. So I, I enjoyed talking to the hygienists. They were, they were open, they were receptive, because that's what they're into. They're into prevention, they're into health, they're into, you know, helping the patient get well. The, the trouble is that they're under the thumb. And, and I'll tell you something that's horrible, that they have the right to practice independently in Maine. They can, they can set up their own office like a barber, and, you know, hang a, a tooth out the door, and you can come in and get your teeth cleaned, which I, I, I herald. I mean, my, why aren't there one on every corner? It's a good thing. And what the dentists make them do is if they go into independent practice, they have to sign away their four years of education in hygiene school and give up their uh, re registered dental hygienist license so they can never again practice with a dentist. They have to practice independently. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. Well, this is Dr. Stan. Our guest today is uh, certainly Dr. Joseph David, Dr. David Kennedy, uh, who certainly has been on the front lines of this battle for many years, trying to educate people about, uh, first of all, the fact that there was mercury uh, sitting in the fillings and was poisoning the people. But even more than that, of course, the danger of water fluoridation. Uh, certainly, if you're out there in the listening audience and you have a question or comment, why we hope that you give us a call. Now, you have to understand that probably about 67 percent of the water in the United States is fluoridated, and 90 percent of that is fluoridated with hydroflow silicic acid, and basically this is far more dangerous than simply a sodium fluoride. And basically, of course, as David was saying, he actually spent tens of thousands of dollars trying to put a system into his, his, his home uh, so he would be able to, uh, uh, to shower without being, of course, besieged with, with fluoride. What happened? Well, you know, I, uh, I had a guy that said, oh, I got this system works for ever and ever. And, and I said, well, fine, let's put a, a gallon counter on it, and I'll measure it. And it, uh, it, it, it failed in three months. And, that you know, he said, oh, well, you know, we need to do it this way. And so they reconstituted. He said, oh, oh, San Diego has such hard water, blah, blah, blah. And so they redid it, and it failed again. So, you know, we keep doing it. I mean, it, we got better the second time. We got twice as many gallons. But it, 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 it's almost impossible to take this stuff out of the water once it's in. And they, they, that's, that's the real tragedy, the deal. But think about it. What if you have your kids in a swimming pool in the summer? They're sitting soaking in this stuff. It goes right through the skin. What if you like to swim as an exercise? Well, it goes right through your skin. What if you uh, have a hot tub and you like to have a, you know, a cocktail in the evening and sit there in the, and, and enjoy the sunset? Oh, it goes right through your skin. So when you put something, something in the water, what if, what if you want to drink a, a beer? Well, when you put something in the water, the beer company is going to use the tap water to make a beverage. And so it ends up in Coca-Cola, soda pop. Uh, a, somebody was uh, sent me an email the other day that uh, they, uh, I told them how to buy the little tester. It's only three or $400. And that uh, they started measuring cereals because, you know, the Wheaties and uh, uh, 
sugar puffs and post oasties and all these things have fluoride in it. Why? Because they're made in fluoridated communities and that the fluoride stays in the dehydrated product. So, you know, the, the, the cereals are basically grains that are ground up and made into little flakes or whatever you're eating, and then they dehydrate it. They take the water away. That leaves the fluoride behind. So we find 10 times more fluoride in the cereal than was in the water that was used to make it. And that's, and so everything that's instant or out of a box or a can is going to have fluoride in it. And that's the problem when you put chemicals in the water supply that A, don't leave, and B, harm the population. So, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, there's a, a bone cancer rate that's pretty high in, in non fluoride areas, too. And that's true. But it's not high in areas of the world that don't have fluoride of, of exposure. It's high in areas that do have fluoride exposure. That's the problem. And why, why bone? Because bone is where fluoride accumulates. And, and the, your body has no use for fluoride, so it parks at the bone. So you end up with joints that go bad. You know, the, the President Bush, uh, past President Bush, had a, a knee replaced the other day. What, why? Washington, D.C. is fluoridated, so they make him coffee with the, the D.C. water. You know, he's in Texas. Texas has a lot of fluoride in the water, natural fluoride. No amount of fluoride is good for you. All right, let's go to Tim. Is calling us from Albany, New York. Hi, Tim. I have a question or comment for our guest. Yes, hi. How you doing? Um, the question is, do the, does reverse osmosis, like the uh, water machines that they have in supermarkets and things that go through, you know, like a five-step filtration plus the uh, reverse osmosis, will that take the fluoride out? No and yes. It, it'll lower it, and it does not take it all out. And that, uh, the trouble is that you know, there are um, a, a huge number of sources of exposure other than the water you drink, and that's the problem. Is it's not your lips. It's your shower. It's your your your, your coffee. It's your, uh, uh, it, you know, if you have uh, eat spaghetti out at an Italian restaurant, you're going to get fluoride in everything you eat. So as long as you allow, and you sit back and say, well, I'm going to protect myself. As long as you allow the program to continue where we adulterate the water with a chemical, then you're going to basically be living in a country that has poisoned children. And Tim, basically, of course, we're poisoning our kids. They know what they're doing. This is not imaginary. This is real. And we have all, we have four tape sets. You can call us at 1-800-544-8927. We get our, our four tape set on fluoride. We've got DVDs on fluoride. We've got books on fluoride. You must understand this is being totally suppressed because the media is controlled. Uh, do you listen to our program regularly? Yes, I have also had a quick question for you. Maybe it'll have to be hold on after thought, the hold break. Hold on thought. We'll be back here in just a moment. Okay, thank you. Hang on. Tim, Tim, you go right ahead. Did you have a question for our guest, Dr. David Kennedy? Yeah, I was wondering if the fluoride pills that they give give or used to give kids, um, if you know what, you know what are the long term effects of those? I used to take those actually. My parents would give me the fluoride vitamins. Yeah, the the long term effects of fluoride pills um, are very similar to drinking the fluoride in the water. It, it basically fluoride is a, 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 a cumulative poison, so it accumulates in the bones. And that is why, in my opinion, we have all these joints that are going bad, is because the, the bones are poisoned. So, you know, the, the, that is not... The, the, the FDA are, is the regulatory agency of the United States government that's supposed to regulate drugs. Fluoride, like you took as a, as a child, as a pill, is a drug. And if you the Congressional Investigation of 2000, my friend Jeff Green held, it was... Uh, Number of questions, is fluoride a drug? Yes, it is. Has any fluoride substance intended to be ingested been approved by the FDA? No. And that uh, in 1975, all 36 applications were rejected for fluoride vitamins. So what you were given was a drug that the FDA said there was no evidence of effectiveness. And so why were you given that? You're given that because of politics. It's got nothing to do with making your teeth strong or anything like that. It had to do 
with pharmaceutical industry making huge amounts of money, you, the billions of dollars have been spent on these useless tablets, and that it ends up costing hundreds of billions of dollars in medical treatments later in life. You know, because you didn't fall over dead when you took a pill, is oh well, it's okay. No, it, what if you take it when you're four, and then when you're eighty-four, your knees are you know bone on bone. That is not acceptable, in my opinion. Is that we have laws and regulations. Uh, the, the FDA has been petitioned, I think, six times, I think, and they, they keep winning because either people die, John Yamianis passed away, uh, there was a John V. Kelly uh, got voted out of office, and, and so all these petitions end up falling by the wayside because the people we're paying to regulate drugs do what they can to stall beyond the life expectancy of a normal human being. Hold that thought, hold that thought. We'll be right back here in just a moment with Dr. Kennedy. Well, this is Dr. Stan. We have Tim calling from Albany, New York, asking about fluoridated medicines. And, and then, are they safe? Well, of course, David's pointing out this. That basically, we're being given fluoride at every turn. People are making a lot of money on this, and it's doing irreparable harm. Tim, anything else you wanted to ask before we let you go? Well, from listening to your program about gas and your comments about fluoride, Dr. Stan, um, so I guess there's a lot of it's about dumbing down, right? Well, first of all, uh, we, these things are going on because we have been dumbed down, but they're destroying our minds. They're destroying the minds of our children. They're destroying our health. Then they know what they're doing. They are evil and wicked people. Go ahead. So the only other question I have um, tonight, maybe your guests would know, because um, we were talking about you know the reverse osmosis trying to take out the, the fluoride, and he said that it would just be um, reduced. But um, I've also heard that the reverse osmosis, if you drink, you know, a lot of that water and stuff, uh, that it can leach the uh, the calcium and minerals out of your bones and teeth. I don't know if, if your guests would know about that. That's not correct. Uh, um, that if you uh, – the, the, I, I drink distilled water, you know, and it, my joints are better now than they were when I started drinking distilled water. So that, that – Distilled water has no fluoride in it. So uh, rainwater, unless you live near a cement factory or something like that, has no fluoride in it. And if you think about it, humans for millions of years drank water that was on the surface. Surface water is low in fluoride. Is it? It's well water. Is it like in Colorado where there's decomposed granite in the, in the soil that is high in fluoride? So basically the human being evolved over millions to drink surface water because you're not going to go dig a hole in the ground until you invent a shovel. Well, basically, uh, David, uh, we have a well. It's about 160 feet here in California. Uh, would we, should we be concerned about the uh, uh, contamination of that oil, of that, of that well? Not unless you're up the valley in Monterey where the, no. where the children got poisoned at the trailer park. No. Is, is it the earth crust? looks like a fudge ripple. Remember the ice cream where they put fudge in it and, it and there was a little layer here and a little layer there, but it wasn't the whole thing? And that's what the Earth's crust looked like. So what you have to do is drill a well and then measure it And then, because you might run into it. I was surprised that there was high fluoride in the Monterey, but there was, and that there's, there was high fluoride in Dighton, Kansas, where my uncle was raised, And you know, but that's the decomposed granite from the Rocky Mountains. So there are little pockets of fluoride around on the planet, and they poison the people that live in that area. But it's not universal. Generally, if it comes out of the sky in the form of rain, it's low in fluoride unless you're in you know, China where it's polluted or near a cement factory or something. So, uh, yes, I would all, I'd, I'd drill a well and measure it. That's what I tell people. Is that It's not that hard to measure fluoride. All right, fine. Thank you very much. Anything else, Tim, before we let you go? So I guess the reverse osmosis, you know, water and the stuff that goes through, you know, like a five-step filtration process, including that, um, you know, you it's, it's out, fine. Okay. It's very pure. Better than drinking the tap water by a long shot. Okay, yeah, so fine. no Thank problem. You. Thanks so very much, Tim. My telephone number is again is one triple eight. 888 liberty that's one 24 liberty or 4648295. But understand, ladies and gentlemen, that they're poisoning the American people. They're poisoning our children 
and they know exactly what they're doing. And if you have the courage to stand up and try to get the information out, you'll be viciously uh, attacked and vilified. Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, that's all they do, though, that they're cowards. Um, the, 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 all it does is take a little courage to stand up. As a dentist, I always opposed, uh, you know, from the early 80s on, mercury and fluoride, and that, you know, that because I used science to oppose it, they would not counterattack. They would, they, you know, they say, oh, he's a nut. He thinks Berkeley's bad. Well, you know, yeah, I got a dictionary. And so the, it, it doesn't really, I mean, yeah, yeah they may attack you. Yeah, what, so what? I mean, you know, sticks and stones, they break my bones. But that's all they do. They don't have any science to support their point of view. They have gobs of industry. They have lots of people that will uh, endorse it. But endorsement is not the same as science. Science has numbers, data, numbers. Uh, you know, they've got research. And so what they, what they do is, is, is even this choice study, Broadbent dummied up a completely stupid study of, of, of just a few children and said, see, it didn't harm them. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, but he didn't control for any of the available. He didn't even control whether they, like your caller, took fluoride tablets. If you live in a fluoride community and you drink the water, is that any different than living in a non-fluoride community and taking fluoride tablets? I don't think so. And so he didn't even control for that. He didn't even separate the two groups. So that's what they do. That's called a, they call it a dummy up study. And it's not, it's not a valid study by anybody's study, but you can get it published in all the dental journals because they don't know the difference between a good study and a bad study. They, they just publish anything that supports their opinion. And that's, that's basically what Socrates said brings evil into society is opinion. Well, well, let me just point out that we have uh, certainly, uh, I think, two or three DVDs, which were made by a fellow named Dr. David Kennedy. He's and a great th- guy, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is, and these are excellent. They're available through Radio Liberty. You need to get these DVDs, you need to watch them, and you need to get the information out. And then, of course, we have this, an excellent 4CT set on water fluoridation. We have a my talk I've given on water fluoridation and population control. They know exactly what they're doing. Uh, certainly, we have a certain Air Force CD, pardon me, our, our, uh, our DVD on Agenda 21, the covert plan, where we get into water fluoridation. All of this information is readily available by calling 1-800-544-8927. 1-800-544-8927. So if you need information, uh, give us a call, but understand they're poisoning your children, they're poisoning your grandchildren. Well, our telephone number is one 888 liberty one 888 liberty or 464-8295. What sort of response has there been from across America with this, with this new study coming out of Harvard? Well, you know, it uh, caused a lot of people to, to take another double look because because who who are the authors? And and you know it's it's funny you can you can have the best data in the world, but if the author is not somebody's well known, then they say, well, you know, it's just that unknown author. But Choi is a, is a Chinese lady. Uh, Sin Guifan is the fellow that invited me to China back in 1999 to uh, uh, make the video or documentary uh, called China's Battle with Crippling Water. It's on my YouTube channel. And then uh, Dr. Granjean, who is well known as a, a researcher in mercury and how it damages children's brains. And so uh, Dr. Grangeen uh, coined the term chemical brain drain, and that it, it, it's not one thing. It, 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 it's, it's the combination of mercury fillings in the children's teeth, mercury in vaccines, fluoride in the water, silica fluoride in the water, uh, fluoride-releasing fillings, fluoride-releasing drugs, fluoride-releasing uh, drops and tablets, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these things are basically making you know, they've even had to change the standards for the for the for the SAT test and lower it so that the kids can get in college because they are not scoring as good as their grandparents did. What does that tell you? Are, you, are we going to be able to invent the, the next Google engine or the next uh, um, you know rocket to the moon or whatever? No, they they, they can't even figure out how to and get to the 7-Eleven. So it, it's uh, 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 damaging our country. It's damaging the, the future of the, the world, really. Oh, Is it, if we're the engine that drives the world forward, that they're intentionally poisoning this engine. They absolutely are. David, how can people get to your website and get your information? 
Well, my website is, is uh, YouTube uh, is uh, David Kennedy DDS. If you put in David Kennedy with two N's and, and DDS, Dog Dog Sierra, that, like a dentist, that you've got my YouTube. I've got 30, 35 programs there. And you can uh, go to my new uh, feature link documentary. It's called Fluoride Gate. And it's actually not about fluoride. It's about the government cover up of the problem. Uh, in 1989, they showed that fluoride caused cancer. And, uh, you know, so they, they spent the, the next 20 years damning the, uh, the poor guy that uh, uh, discovered that. So, you know, it's, it's, it, his, his crime was writing a memo that says, uh uh-huh, it's the first time in my experience that rats were exposed to less than uh, humans are. So, anyway, it's, uh, that's Fluoride Gate. Uh, it's an interesting documentary, and, and I've actually uh, I'm getting better uh, acclaim in Europe than I am in the United States. Well, basically, the, unfortunately, they have certainly much less media control in Europe than they have here. Let's go to Lawrence, who's calling us from Santa Cruz. Uh, Sydney Lawrence, do you have a question or comment for our guest? Uh, yes, I do. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, I was wondering if the spilling water. Uh, bypasses or takes out the fluoride. Distilling water removes 100% of the oils, the pesticides, the lead, the, the, the uh, heavy metals, and the fluoride that's in the water. When you end up with distilled water, if you do a, a double distilled water uh, and, and then run it through a carbon filter at, when you're all done, then you end up with H2O, which is basically what I think you should be drinking. Now, I have a, a, a distiller in my house that, that provides water in, in all of the locations where you'd need to cook or, or prepare foods and or drink. And and I, you know, there are people who say, oh, distilled water, blah, blah, blah. Show me the data. There is no research showing that drinking distilled water is harmful, you, uh, harmful to you at all. And let me point out, Lawrence, here in Santa Cruz, why we why we, we do not have uh, a fluoride added to the water. And the one reason is because, of course, the uh, people like myself on the right made common cause with people on the left and uh, fought the establishment, the Santa Cruz Sentinel and the people who control our government, and we fought them to a standstill so we do not have fluoridated water. We got a lot to be thankful for. Go ahead. Well, that's what I was wanting to know. Um, I've uh, been uh, always interested in distilled water. I've been drinking it most of my life. Here. Oh. Okay, well, you keep uh, out on drinking it. And thanks very much for anything else you want to say before we let you go. No, thank you very much. God bless. Thanks for telephone. calling. Our telephone number is one eight 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 two four liberty. One triple eight two four liberty or four six four eight two nine five, and it's interesting to notice that they much more concerned about this over in Europe. But of course, we're destroying the very heart and soul and minds of our children and our grandchildren. And the average individual could not believe anything could be this evil, but it really is. Well, David, we've got about five minutes for you to wrap up the program. We go right ahead. Well, let, let me first thank you for for sharing your, your information with your listeners. Is it, is it that it's because of people like you that, that I think the tide is turning? Is it there? We need to keep pushing at the wheel because there's forces of evil are pushing the other way. But you know that because of your programs, Doctor Stan, and your and your DVDs and and such, that the public is becoming more and more aware of the fact that you cannot trust the information that comes out of industry-controlled government agencies. And that's what the FDA is. It's a government agency that's controlled by the industry they're supposed to regulate. And that I have lots of faith in the American people. They're good people, they love their children, and that they will do what they can to make this country strong. And that's who I'm talking to. I, I could care less about whether or not it's recommended by the FDA or the ADA or the some dumb dumb DA. That it doesn't make any difference to me. It makes differences that if it's harming the children, they need to stop it. It's if I were sitting out in the on the front of my house beating on a baby in, in a carriage with a with a metal rod, that every neighbor in the house around me would come out and make knock me down to the ground and take that stick away from me perhaps hit me with a stick. That's no different than what the government is doing to every child in this country, is that by putting a chemical in the water, 
It is damaging that child. No different than some bum with a stick banging on the baby's carriage. It is just as harmful, if not more so. And so people need to find into their hearts a little courage, stand up, tell the truth, and say, if I don't want it in my water, stop it. And that, that's what I'm calling on them to do, is stand up and protect your country. Hey, Stop Minnesota, we've got water. Kurt calling from Monterey. Hi, Kurt, how are you doing? Fine, fine. I am so... Is this the Kurt who used to be over here in Santa Cruz many years sure ago? Sure is. Okay, go right ahead. In Santa Cruz, I enjoyed non-fluoridated water, but now that I'm in Monterey and Salinas, I assume I'm getting fluoride down here, right? No. I'm not certain. I, I think uh, Monterey it's, hasn't fluoridated yet. Okay, go ahead. Oh, well, wonderful. What about Salinas? I don't know. Okay. That's great. Well, thank you. Anything else you want to know? Uh, well, yeah, if I'm on the road and I stop to get water someplace, Assume it's is flirty. there a safe bottled water, if they don't have distilled water, is there safe bottled water to get that isn't somebody else's fluoridated tap water? Yeah, stuff from France. Avion. Okay, from France. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very, very much. Huh? Okay, fine. We'll go right ahead, David. And I well, I, I think I think I said what I need to say is, is that you know that just tell your listeners to reach into their hearts and say, what am I going to do for my country today? Figure out some way you can bother the people that are putting the fluoride in there, and to bother them by write them a letter. You know, if you write your city council person, say, you know, I'm sensitive to fluoride. I don't want it in my water. How can I avoid it? Let them worry. Let them answer that question. And, and ladies and gentlemen, my suggestion is just ask people, why are they fluoridating the water when fluoride is a deadly poison? Why suddenly are they fluoridating the water all across the country when all the scientific studies show that it hurts children? Ask four or five people every single day that question, and if they give you a blank answer, tell them to where to go on the Internet to find the answers of that. And as they begin to understand that there is an organized effort to poison our children, I would hope that more and more people would join us in this epic struggle. Parting thought, you've got about two minutes to wrap up the program for us. Parting thought is, is that, that uh, we need to work together to make this happen, and that, and that you know that there are uh, videos that you've got available, Doctor Stan. I, I, the Fluoride Gate is available on the internet, or you can buy DVDs and send them out to all your relatives and friends, and, and you know if you got grandchildren, send it to them. Is it, it? These are powerful tools. Is it? I I wrote a book on the subject, but you know most people can't read. Well, why can't they read? I don't know, but it takes time. But the video is much easier to to cover the topic. Same information in, in a very short amount of time. So basically the information that I'm sharing with the public is available on videos, and, and I don't make any money from it because I'm doing it because I think it's my obligation. And I, I really, really appreciate you having me on the program, Stan, so that we can share with your listeners what we need to do to make our country stronger and healthier. And, then, and we're going to continue doing this as long as God gives us the breath and the ability to do it. I guess it's been Dr. David Kennedy. Dr. David Kennedy, go up on the Internet. You can find his material if you'd like to get his DVDs. Call us at 1-800-544-8927. 1-800-544-8927. Could it really be true that they're poisoning us? Absolutely. What are you going to do about it? Well, if you do nothing, you'll have nobody to complain about when we lose America. Good night, David. God bless. We'll talk to you real soon. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Stan. Good night. Well, this is Dr. Stan back here, and certainly we hope you enjoyed the conversation with Dr. David Kennedy. We do carry his DVDs. We carry his book. But we have a four-CD set on this. We have a great deal of information on this in my talk on Agenda 21 of the Covert Plan. So basically give us a call at 1-800-544-8927. We have a whole stable full of books on water fluoridation. And what you want to do is just start asking people as you meet them why are they poisoning our water and most people look at you a little surprised and then just talk to them very very briefly about the danger of water fluoridation and suggest that they tell others about this and tell them where they can get the information on this but fortunately that you can go up on the internet you can find this latest harvard study and ask them if that's really true 
why wasn't this on the front page of your local newspaper pointing out that they're poisoning your children and your grandchildren? We need a coordinated effort, and we need you involved. I can only reach a certain number of people with our radio stations, and even though we do five hours of talk radio a day, five days a week, why we can't reach the number of people, but you can, and the people that you can talk to can. And so join us in this epic struggle uh, to try to educate people, and of course they poison us in so many ways, certainly uh, by certainly the uh, the lead, uh, certainly that's uh, in the hydrofluorosilicic acid that so many of the children are taking, certainly the mercury and the fillings, uh, certainly the, uh, the poisons in the coloring and various substances in our food supply, the bisphenol, which is used to line every tin can, every uh, tin can in America contains bisphenol, which is a poison, and we could go down the line with certainly all the other things that they're doing, GMO foods, but we need your help. Help and you can actually reach people just by asking them questions, try to get them to read, try to get them to think, try to get them to get up on the Internet and tell them, look, the information is there. But you're never going to hear about it because of the degree of control that exists today or what the American people think and believe. Now, believe me, uh, some people will sort of scoff at you, but there are others who increasing in numbers know that something's wrong. This latest article, it's just this last week in Newsweek magazine, about conspiracies, you can find it on the Internet. And when they did a poll of intelligent people, they found that 23%, 23%, 23% believe uh, certainly that there is a, uh, a conspiracy of some sort. Now, this is the time when I need to remind you that my ministry, Radio Liberty, is primarily listener-supported, and we are dependent upon those of you who listen to our programs to help us as we reach out across America five hours a day, five days a week, to try to educate people, and we do have listeners, not only across America, but we found out just today the number of people we have over there in England, in Birmingham, who listen to our programs there. But we need your help so we can continue doing what we're doing. Uh, we, quite frankly, uh, we need financial support, and so you can join the Radio Liberty family of supporters. You can certainly buy the books that we offer, the CD sets that we offer, the, uh, certainly the, uh, the items. You can find them on the Internet at RadioLiberty.com. That's RadioLiberty.com. If you'd like to get a free catalog, give us a call at 1-800-544-8927. I said that's one eight hundred five four four eight nine two seven. But we need, of course, you to and your family to join together with us in this epic struggle. If you're not in a position to help us financially, then we ask you to pray for America. We ask you to pray for revival. We ask you to pray for our leaders and our ministers, but please certainly pray for my ministry, Radio Liberty, for our provision and protection because we're involved in an epic struggle for the souls of men and the survival of Christian civilization. And again, our number is one 800 544 And we'll be back hopefully with you tomorrow evening at the same time. Until then, may the Lord be with you. 